One year after the former Prime Minister of Pakistan, Imran Khan was ousted through a controversial vote of no confidence, brought in by a coalition of 13 political parties backed by the then Army Chief. We look back at how the state has been using its entire force to eliminate Imran Khan and his party and suppress the voice of his supporters committing blatant human rights violations. On 21st May 2022, PTI's senior vice president Dr. Shidi Mazari was abducted by armed personnel in broad daylight and kept in an undisclosed location for hours. The police manhandled her and took her under illegal detention. PTI opposition leader in Sindh Assembly Halim Adil Sheikh was taken into custody three times. He was first arrested from Lahore on 6 July 2022. His house was also raided prior to his abduction. He was again taken into custody on 27th July 2022 and was tortured and manhandled under detention. On 9th August 2022, Imran Khan's chief of staff, Dr. Shehbaz Gil, was abducted by unknown men and detained for days during which he was stripped naked, tortured and sexually abused in police custody. On August 11, 2022, Shehbaz Gil's driver's wife was arrested, along with her minor child, for the purpose of collecting evidence. The baby was kept without her mother, denying her the fundamental rights of a minor. The 10-month-old baby's heart-wrenching cries for her mother went viral and there was a huge criticism from the people as well as the party leadership. On 13th October 2022, PTI's sitting senator, Azam Savati, was illegally detained by the FIA Cyber Crime Unit on a tweet. He was humiliated and arrested at 3 a.m. from his residence in front of his grandchildren, who were traumatized to see the whole incident. The 75-year-old senator was stripped naked and tortured. He was arrested again from his farmhouse because of another tweet on 27th November 2022. Even after his release, he was harassed and threatened. His wife received an inappropriate video of their bedroom breaching their privacy. Senator Azam Savati broke into tears talking about this shameful political victimization in a press conference on 5th November 2022. On 1st November 2022, PTI's Information Secretary, Andali Babas, was released after a brief detention by police near Banigala. Andali and several other workers were arrested and shifted to an undisclosed location. Andali Babas later claimed that female police officials misbehaved with her and pulled her hair while in detention. On 25th January 2023, former PTI Minister Fabad Chaudhry was arrested from his residence by several men in four cars without registration numbers and without sharing any details of an FIR. He was abducted for allegedly inciting violence against the election commissioner of Pakistan by calling him a munshi. On February 2, 2023, PTI's ally and head of the Awami Muslim League, Sheikh Rashid, was arrested from his residence for revealing the assassination plot against Imran Khan. He was manhandled by the police during court hearings and two additional bogus cases were filed against him later. On 20th March 2023, Imran Khan's nephew, Barrister Hassan Niazi, was abducted by the police despite being on bail. He was taken into custody from outside the anti-terrorism court, although he was granted bail by the court before his arrest. On 6 April 2023, Federal Minister and PTI leader Ali Amin Gandapur was arrested from Khyber Pakhtunkhwa's Dera Ismail Khan district. He was taken into custody after he voluntarily surrendered to the police outside the Peshawar High Court where he went to secure bail in the cases registered against him on different charges including terrorism. Ali Amin's lawyer said that the district police officer told the session judge that they had to arrest Kandapur at all cost whether there is any case against him or not. The counsel further claimed that the DPO was ready to face the contempt of court notice because he had orders from above. On 23rd March 2023, focal person to Imran Khan, Azhar Mashwani, was abducted by unknown personnel and was kept in undisclosed location for several days. He was not presented in court even after clear court orders. He later revealed that he was abducted on the orders of the Interior Minister Rana Sanala. On March 16, 2023, police tried to arrest Dr. Yasmin Rashid from her clinic in Lahore without any FIR or arrest warrants, despite the fact that she had a pre-arrest bail in Zille Shah's death case. In May 2022 and again in March 2023, police raided the houses of several PTI leaders, ground workers and social media activists at night. They harassed the family members and illegally detained their family members, who in some cases were children. 
PTI leader and former member National Assembly Kamal Shahzai was blackmailed and threatened through a fake and objectionable video during October 2022 sent to her family to pressurize her. She was being harassed since September 2022, but no one took any action. In March 2023, more than 2100 PTI social media activists, party workers and supporters were abducted during a nationwide crackdown on Imran Khan's party. These also included three children and women. They were illegally detained and their families were harassed and threatened. A series of sham FIRs were initiated against Imran Khan after he was ousted in April 2022. Collectively, about 150 plus bogus FIRs have so far been registered against him across the country under terrorism, sedition, contempt of court, and blasphemy, purely on political grounds. A series of fake FIRs and bogus cases have been filed against several PTI leaders, social media activists, and ground workers over the period of one year to politically victimize them. PTI's ally PMLQ's leaders and their workers were also politically victimized through bogus FIRs, raids, harassment and abductions. Muna Salai's friend Farhan Khan was abducted by unknown men and detained illegally for days. Police also raided Pervez Salai's residence late at night and detained his security guards. PMLQ's legal adviser Amir Said Raun was also abducted by FIA and kept in illegal detention. A watchman named Javed Ali was abducted and tortured to forcibly extract a statement against the PTI leader Usman Dar. He was taken to an unknown location and beaten by 7 to 8 men. When he resisted, he was blackmailed that they will abduct his wife and children and strip her, photograph her and upload the footage on Facebook. The government tried to crush PTI's call for a long march and used force to stop people from coming out to exercise their democratic right to protest. There was heavy shelling to disperse protesters. Their cars were destroyed and they were beaten and detained illegally for coming out to join the march. Two PTI workers were killed as a result of this unlawful outage against the marchers. Imran Khan had to call off the march to stop further bloodshed. Even days before the march started, police illegally raided houses of PTI workers and leadership and detained them to stop them from joining the march. Heavy blockades were erected on all entry points to Islamabad to halt people from entering the capital and protest. The marchers also comprised of women and children. On March 8, 2023, just few hours before PTI's rally, the caretaker government of Punjab, which is known to be a puppet of the current regime, imposed Section 144 in Lahore to ban all kinds of political activities. The police unleashed brutal tear gas and rubber bullet attacks on any peaceful protesters who tried to gather for the rally and arrested several PTI workers and supporters. The brutality against the PTI workers resulted in the death of one worker, Ali Bilal, and 21 injured. Ali Bilal lovingly called as Zille Shah was arrested and brutally tortured, which resulted in his death. His videos from inside the police van proved that he was illegally detained and taken into police custody to be returned dead hours later. This was later confirmed in his post-mortem report which showed 26 injuries and great physical violence inflicted on his body with a heavy tool causing his death. The private parts of his body were also damaged during the torture. Zilisha was a special needs person. Right after the regime change operation, the grip also tightened on journalists and media houses in an attempt to silence them. Multiple journalists and media houses were attacked during this one year. At least 5 journalists were forcibly taken off air for exposing the regime change operation and for raising their voice against injustice. These included Arsha Sharif, Imran Riaz, Arif Hamid Bhatti, Maliha Hashmi and Aftab Iqbal. On 10th April 2022, Imran Khan's focal person on digital media, Dr. Arsalan Khalid's house was raided few hours after the regime change by about a dozen unidentified men. He and his family members were threatened and all their mobile phones and laptops were taken away illegally. On May 11th, 2022, a team member of the digital media platform Siasat.pk received a threatening call asking for the owner's whereabouts. On 13th June 2022, Aaj News TV journalist was kidnapped in broad daylight in Karachi. On July 1st, 2022, unidentified people assaulted senior journalist Ayaz Amir in Lahore. 
a group of men dragged him out of his car, beat him, tore his clothes and fled with his phone and wallet. On July 9, 2022, senior journalist and Bol News anchor person was attacked outside his office in Islamabad by unknown men. On December 20, 2022, senior anchor person Shifa Yousafzai was harassed and threatened by unknown men. They trespassed her house and harassed her staff and questioned them about her whereabouts. On 22nd August 2022, Bol News anchor person Jamil Farooqi was arrested. He was stripped naked and tortured in police custody. On 5th July 2022, senior journalist Imran Riaz was arrested from Islamabad Toll Plaza by 20 to 30 policemen. 18 cases were filed against him in different cities. He was again taken into custody by the FIA on February 2, 2023, from Lahore to be released on the next day by the Lahore High Court. On October 27, 2022, FIA arrested senior anchor person Chaudhary Ghulam Hussain from a coffee shop in Lahore. On 10th August 2022, Ilyas Samu, a reporter from Sindhi newspaper Daily Awami Awaz and Thatta, was arrested by the Sindh police for reporting rehabilitation of flood-affected families on a sham FIR of carrying an illegal weapon. On 10th August 2022, ARY News Director Ahmad Yusuf was arrested from his Karachi residence on sedition charges without an arrest warrant. On 14 January 2023, Bol News journalist Shahid Aslam was arrested by the FIA from Lahore for allegedly leaking personal tax data of former Army Chief General Kamar Javed Bajwa. On May 7, 2022, FIA initiated a criminal inquiry against journalist Sami Ibrahim. On May 21st, Arshid Sharif and Sabir Shakir were booked under sedition charges by the police. Arrest warrants were also issued for ARY News owner and CEO Salman Iqbal, producer Adil Raja, and anchor person Khawar Ghumman. Senior defense analyst Lieutenant General retired Amjad Shoaib was arrested by Islamabad police on 27 February 2023 and was sent on a three-day physical remand by the magistrate. On 20th March 2023, the Bureau Chief of Bol News, Siddiq Jan, was abducted from his office in the capital by unknown men who transported him in a private vehicle to an unknown location. Post-regime change, hundreds of social media activists were harassed for speaking up against the regime change conspiracy. They were abducted, stripped naked and forced to give scripted statements. Their mobiles and laptops were confiscated and their families were harassed. Pakistan's leading investigative journalist, Arshad Sharif is targeted and harassed for exposing the corruption of the ruling elites, as well as the conspiracy of the regime change operation. He faced charges of high treason and was forced to leave the country and live in exile. He first flew to UAE and later shifted to Kenya in August 2022. Arshad Sharif repeatedly received death threats. He was brutally murdered in Kenya on October 23, 2022. Pakistani authorities and Kenyan police tried to make it look like a case of mistaken identity, but was later proved to be a ruthless murder as per his post-mortem report. There has been no progress on his case and he still awaits justice. On August 8, 2022, ARY News was taken down in parts of Pakistan by the orders of Pemra, who later sent a show cause notice to the broadcaster. On 5th September 2022, Premier decided to immediately take both Bowl News and Bowl Entertainment channels off air for not seeking clearance from the Interior Ministry. Premier also imposed a ban on the telecast of PTI Chairman Imran Khan's live speeches with immediate effect on August 20, 2022. This was later revoked by the Islamabad High Court, however, the government kept pressurizing the media not to give any coverage to Imran Khan's speeches, public appearances, protests and election rallies. In August 2022, the government launched a sordid campaign against Imran Khan, accusing him of disrespecting Islam and the Prophet peace be upon him. A journalist posted a video having Imran Khan's statements without context, accusing him of having been committed blasphemy. This video was reposted by many federal ministers and media houses known to be government sympathizers. Federal ministers conducted press conferences against Imran Khan, inciting violence and religious hatred against him, putting his life in danger. On November 3, 2022, Imran Khan was injured in an assassination attempt while leading a long march in Wazirabad, Pakistan. 
The suspect was arrested by the police and Imran Khan was taken to Shokat Khanam Hospital for treatment. This was all a part of a plot to get Imran Khan killed and make it look like a religious hate crime. Imran Khan had already warned about an imminent attack on his life. The government released the shooter's confessional video without any investigation on national TV just few hours after the attack in which the shooter confessed that he wanted to kill Imran Khan because Imran Khan called himself a prophet, making it look like a religious hate crime. One citizen named Mozam Nawaz died in this armed attack while 14 others including some top PTI leaders were injured. The PDM government constantly used state media and official platforms to build and spread propaganda against Imran Khan and his party, starting from accusing him of blasphemy by putting his life in danger to running a planned campaign against him on fake corruption charges in the Tosha Khana and the prohibited funding cases. Throughout the year, federal ministers and government representatives gave press conferences on national television maligning Imran Khan with below-the-belt remarks and absolute lies. Starting 14th March 2023, Pakistani authorities launched a full-scale attack on Imran Khan's Lahore residence in order to arrest him even after he submitted a signed guarantee that he will appear in an Islamabad court. They fired heavy tear gas and attacked with water cannons and rubber bullets to disperse the crowd outside Zaman Park. The siege went on for two days before the operation finally halted. These efforts to arrest Imran Khan are a part of the current regime's agenda to suppress him. On 18th March 2023, former Prime Minister Imran Khan set out to appear in court in Islamabad, complying with the judicial orders. His caravan was blocked at multiple points and he was stopped from reaching the judicial complex along with his caravan. There was heavy shelling around the complex for hours. Imran Khan faced intense resistance from the police and unidentified men seen at the complex awaiting his arrival. This all seemed like a conspiracy to assassinate him and make it look like an accident. On 18th March 2023, police attacked Imran Khan's Zaman Park residence in his absence. The police stormed his Lahore residence without presenting any search warrant and against clear orders from the court. They broke the front gate with heavy machinery beat the workers and arrested several of them illegally. During the raid, they destroyed his personal belongings and took multiple items from his house, including food items and things belonging to the house help. More than 20 articles of the Constitution of Pakistan were violated during this one-year post-regime change operation. Pakistan's constitution guarantees fundamental rights for every citizen, including security of person, right to fair trial, freedom of assembly, freedom of speech, and inviolability of dignity of man.